Hello, in this tutorial you will see how to install StorageCraft File Backup and Recovery and begin backing up files to StorageCraft Cloud. Begin by downloading and installing the software on the computer you want to back up. The latest version is always available in a link on the management portal. When the installation completes, enter your management username and password. Each computer you back up will belong to an account, which is simply some organizational unit. You can choose an existing account from the list or add a new one at this time. Next, you can either create a new backup for this computer or connect it to an existing backup. In this context, you can think of a backup as a particular bucket where this computer's files are stored. Connecting to an existing backup is useful when a user gets a new computer and needs to recover their files from their old computer. In this example, I'll connect to an existing computer. Connecting to an existing backup in this flow requires two-factor authentication. After entering the code successfully, you will see the confirmation screen. At this point, everything is installed and connected, and backups will begin happening according to the configuration defined in the management portal. Each computer uses a standard configuration that defines what to backup, when to backup, how much bandwidth to use during which hours, and many other options. StorageCraft File Backup and Recovery provides you an extremely flexible set of configuration options. Let's have a quick look. Here is the standard configuration that the computer we just installed is using. The configuration defines what to back up, subject to exclusions here. Files that match the rules in this section will back up as long as they don't match one of the exclusions rules. For example, we have a rule to back up all of the user's documents and desktop folders, but we also have rules to exclude all files greater than 200 megabytes or files that have been not modified in over one year. Lastly, we have a set of rules that tells the software to completely skip some common folders with large numbers of files. This allows the backup scans to happen very rapidly, with the trade-off being any files in these locations will not even be tested against the backup rules and will be invisible to the Backup Analyzer feature in the Management Portal. The Backup Analyzer is a powerful tool used for examining the result of a configuration applied to a computer. Let's have a look. As we can see, this computer has 19 files and 175 megs of data marked for backup. The same file shows incomplete. This is because our backup scan is not run yet. We'll take a look at scan scheduling in a minute. Clicking into this tree map view, we can see which directories account for the most data marked for backup. As we can see, it's all in the users folder and roughly split between documents and desktop. The configuration can be modified within the backup analyzer as well. For example, if there's a file that was marked for backup by the standard configuration, we can make a computer-specific override rule to exclude it here. In Explore mode, you will see all files that are marked for backup or not. For example, on the Desktop folder, we see three files that are excluded because they match rules for being too old or too big. If we want to back those up for this computer, we can make a specific rule to always back up this item. The same can be done for a folder as well. Here's how we would configure the computer to back up the entire contents of the Desktop folder always. Rerunning the analysis will update the totals. So when will backups happen? StorageCraft will scan the file system on the computer on a scheduled basis. The schedule can be found in the configuration editor. By default, the computers will run the scan at the time defined by the standard configuration, but this can be overridden on a per-computer basis as shown here. So for example, if we want this computer to run its backup scan at 1.30, we'll change it right now. I paused the video for a little while and in the meantime the computer automatically downloaded the configuration updates and started performing its backup scan at 1.30. We can use the status viewer to see progress. By default, during the business day, 50% of observed bandwidth is available for backup use. This can be adjusted in the configuration in the management portal. Again, any changes to the configuration will be downloaded and automatically applied by the client computer.
When a backup scan completes, it sends status information of the scan to the server. The last complete backup date and time will be updated if all the files marked for backup were known to be backed up at the conclusion of the scan. With each subsequent backup scan, only new or changed files matching the backup rules will be backed up. Also, at the conclusion of the scan, new information is available in the backup analyzer. On-demand backups can be run on the computer side as well. Just right-click the file, select StorageCraft File Backup and Recovery, and click Backup Remotely Now. Status can be checked using the StorageCraft File Backup and Recovery status viewer. Finally, to restore, using Windows Explorer, click on StorageCraft File Backup and Recovery and navigate to the file or folder you want to restore. Right-click the item, choose Restore to, and pick a location. The restore of the files will begin immediately. If you connect them to an existing backup during installation, you will need to first retrieve the certificates, which can be done using the Status Viewer Tools menu. This concludes the tutorial on getting started with StorageCraft File Backup and Recovery. Thank you for watching.